This is Debbie Arnold with Dining with Debbie. Today I'm bringing you um, a version of a classic Italian dish, uh, and I think it's pronounced cotolette bolognese. Uh, now, I, I won't swear by that. Anyway, uh, the classic dish would use veal. Uh, I'm actually going to use some really nice loin uh, pork chops. You can use tenderloin and slice it up. You can use loin and slice it up. But I found these on sale and I thought, well, I'll just adapt those to the recipe. So you're going to start by placing your pork chop in a baggie or with some plastic wrap because you are going to have to tenderize these. And somewhere in the renovation of our kitchen a couple of years ago, my meat tenderizer handle disappeared. So this is what I'm using. Uh, and we're going to pound that until it's thin. And these were fairly thin chops to start with, and that's what you want. If you were doing this the plastic way, these would be really, really thin, about an eighth of an inch uh, thick, actually. I probably won't get them that thin. And once you have them all whacked away, you can take out your frustrations on I remember my grandmothers always doing this with their chicken fried steaks and um, even sometimes their chicken breast. And I, I do this sometimes with the chicken breast too. Anyway, we're tenderizing it. And once you do that, then you are going to sprinkle on a little cracked black pepper. Need to crack some more. Just sprinkle it lightly on both sides, season it up, because you don't just eat one side uh, of the pepper, of the pepper, of the pork chop. All right, we're going to take that now, and then we're going to take a very thin slice of prosciutto. You can find prosciutto in just about any market these days. That little fat piece up there, I usually just kind of peel off, and that's okay. Lay that prosciutto on top. Um, and I've forgotten how big a package this was to start with, but we like it wrapped around cantaloupe or melon or um, cheese. It's really good just on a cheese tray. All right, so we have our piece of prosciutto on top of the pork chop. I'm going to put it back into my baggie. And like I said, you could use, um, you know, plastic wrap of some kind. Put it back in there. Make sure it's spread all over the top of it. And I'm going to pound that again so that the prosciutto sticks very well to the pork chop. It really doesn't take a whole lot of effort. All right, at this point, I'm going to put the pork chops back into the refrigerator and let them stay there at least 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to let these stay probably a little bit longer. And then we're going to come back and I'll show you the breading that we're going to use and how they're cooked. I think this uh, is a dish that you will really enjoy. My husband actually saw it on one of the cooking programs that I tend to watch all the time. And he said, oh, you've got to make that. That just looks so good. So I'm doing this in his honor today. So come back here in just a little bit and I'll show you how we finish this project up. Thank you. Okay, so our pork chops have been in the refrigerator and have chilled the pork chops that have been uh, layered with the prosciutto. And, and so now we're going to take them out and we're going to dredge them because once they're dredged, they're also going to need to go back into the refrigerator uh, set on a wire rack and um, kind of air dry. You don't want to lay them flat in a pan or on a plate because you want that air to circulate around them and let that kind of dry off. So we take our uh, pork chops that we have whacked a bunch and we are going to first uh, dredge them in all-purpose flour and then we're going to dredge them in beaten uh, eggs and then in crushed um, panko. Before I dredge them, let me show you a little trick. So uh, I put the, the uh, panko in the bowl and then I just took my cup, that I, my measuring cup, and I mashed that. 
you want it to be a little bit finer than it typically comes when it's in the bag or the box or whatever container your panko comes in. Panko is Japanese breadcrumbs and I use it a lot uh, because it just adds that crunchiness to uh, your dishes. I used it recently in the uh, uh, chicken fried chicken that I did. If you haven't tried that recipe, I sure hope you will. It is so good. All right, so we have our <clears throat> panko crushed up and I sprinkle a little pepper onto that panko. And I will give you all of the uh, ingredients for this, uh, both on my blog and in the posting on Facebook. Excuse me. <coughs> all right, so we take our pork chop, okay, and we're going to dip it, coat it first in the flour, dredge it. You wanna keep one hand dry and one hand wet. So in our next one, in the egg, I'm going to use my left hand. This is so hard for me to remember to do, y'all. All right. In the egg wash. And then we're going into the panko. So I'm going to use my right hand. Let that drain off just a little bit. And now it's in the panko. Uh, I like to use pie plates when I'm dredging, uh, but these bowls work as well. Um, just... Honestly, I didn't want to go in, down to the downstairs pantry and get the pie plates. <clears throat> All right, so we've coated them with the panko. I'm going to lay them on a wire rack over a pan, and then I'll put them back in the refrigerator until I get ready to cook them. They need to be in there at least 15 minutes. All right, so once again, we take our pork chop. It's got the prosciutto on it. We're going to dredge it in the all-purpose flour. And you know, if you have any um, flour left over, if you want to save it, you can. You just put it in a baggie and mark it, uh, you know, pork, so that you know what it was used for, and then put it in your freezer. All right, into the egg wash. And your prosciutto is staying nicely uh, adhered to your pork chop because you pounded it into uh, the pork chop earlier. Okay. That prosciutto is a little bit salty, so at this point, we have not added any extra salt. Okay, and then into our panko, again, making that nice dry dredge. These were pretty lean pork chops, so I really didn't <coughs> excuse me, have any fat that I had to cut off. But if you wanted to trim them off, you should. Okay. Into the flour. There again, I used both hands. I, I told y'all I had problems with this. Okay. And into the egg wash. And then the panko. And the panko can also be saved. But I don't like to mix my meats, so I do mark it, uh, you know, with whatever kind of meat I used it for. I use panko when I'm doing uh, my fried okra, too, and it works really well. So if I were frying okra right now, I would just use this same panko in the bread. It wouldn't be concerned about any cross-contamination or anything like that. All right, so the pork chops are on our wire cake rack set over our pan. I'm gonna put these back into the refrigerator and leave them for at least 15 minutes. And then we'll proceed to step number three. But before I do that, <clears throat> I wanted uh, to show you that I have already grated up some Parmesan, actually it's a, a Pecorino Romano. I decided to use that instead of the Parmesan. Either one's fine. Um, Pecorino Romano tends to be a little bit saltier. I happen to like the flavor a little bit more, although Parmesan is great. You want to use freshly grated cheese, uh, either the Parmesan or the Pecorino Romano. You don't want to use this dry stuff in the can at this point and you don't want to use the pre-grated. Um, in case you don't know, the pre-grated cheese, while I use it for some things, uh, it doesn't work for everything. Um, it has a coating on it. Sometimes it's cornstarch or whatever coating they use to keep it from sticking in the bag, and that keeps it from melting sometimes as it should, and you want this to be able to melt. So I've already pre-grated my cheese, and uh, if you don't, whatever little tiny pieces of cheese you have left over or cheese rind that you have left over, you want to put those in a bag and keep them in your freezer. 
Y'all, this is so good to add to soups. Uh, it just adds an extra dimension of flavor. I pull it in my, my bolognese sauce. Uh, I use it in lots of different ways. Um, you can also go to your uh, cheese monger in your grocery store and ask them for Parmesan rinds. And they keep them and they sell them. They're very cheap. So I sometimes just go get a container of them, keep them in my freezer. And then whenever I, I need a piece, I'll just pull it out of the freezer and pop it into my soup or my stew or whatever it is I happen to be making. It adds such incredible flavor to your dish. So that's a little hint for you. I'll pop this in the freezer and it'll be there whenever I get ready to use it. Okay, time being, I'm going to put the pork chops into the freezer, not the freezer, into the refrigerator and let them stay there uh, and chill thoroughly before I cook, finish cooking them up. Okay, we're ready to start cooking our pork, our pork chops with the prosciutto. I have uh, six tablespoons of oil heating in my pan here and it's just about uh, medium to medium high and I'm going to fry these one at a time so that the crispness will stay with them. We like that crunchiness. So I'm going to place them one at a time into the skillet and let them brown completely on both sides. Um, this will take just a few minutes to do that. So once it's done, I'll come back and I'll show you what the next step is. This is a step-by-step -step process with this dish, but I think it's one that you're going to really enjoy. Okay, so um, I have our pork ready to be, uh, the cheese ready to be added to the pork. So I have uh, wiped out the skillet that I browned those up in and returned two of them to the skillet. I, uh, since there's just two of us eating, I'm going to uh, save the other one to use later on. Anyway, we're going to top the chops with uh, a layer of this Pecorino Romano and set our stove to medium high heat. And then we are going to pour in about a fourth of a cup of water. This is going to create a steam bath for it. So immediately put the top on it. We're going to let that stay there for just a, a couple of minutes or so until the cheese is melted. And um, then uh, it'll be ready to serve up. I have a sauce that I'm making up for it. It's over here. It's butter and garlic and uh, some chicken bouillon. Uh, you could use chicken broth in place of, um, uh, you know, uh, if you wanted to. I use chicken bouillon and water, and but you could use chicken broth if you already had some. Anyway, and so I've got that ready and it's reducing. And then right before I serve the pork, I'm going to add some lemon juice to that. And I, I'll go over all of that in the recipe that I post. Um, it sounds like this is a really involved, long dish. It's not. It just takes small, simple steps. And you may not be used to cooking in those steps. A lot of this could be done ahead of time. You could absolutely have the pork chops uh, pounded and chilled and breaded and put back in the refrigerator and wait just for the frying step until you get ready to have your uh, lunch or your dinner. All right, so I'm letting those uh, stay in the skillet and the, they're steaming here and the cheese, they will stay there while the cheese melts. And I'm gonna serve that up today with some cheese ravioli with um, sage butter and toasted walnuts and some roasted zucchini uh, and yellow squash still have those coming in from the garden so we're going to enjoy those uh, i will uh, show you the finished dish as soon as it, it the cheese gets melted but uh, i hope you have a blessed day and you'll come back to join me real soon thank you very much